I need to understand, Miss Pinky, why are you slutty with it? <laughs> well, look, Karen, I've been slutty for a very long time. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm here. Um, how do you feel about uh, Forrest Whitaker? Right. <laughs> you know, I love me some Forrest Whitaker. Okay, I've been watching uh, Godfather of Harlem the whole two seasons. Look, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I started this concept in, in 2018. And when you think about veganism, right? Like people say vegan is boring. Like it don't taste good, especially our people, right? For the most part. Um, I wanted to create something that was going to spark a level of dialogue that was going to make people ask questions. And you know us, you can get people to ask questions and you got them to pay attention. And when you can get somebody to pay attention, you can show them or teach them or let them know whatever you want them to know. So I did just that. So I came up with this crazy ass name called Slutty Vegan, right? Thinking that this was just going to be a ghost restaurant and the ghost restaurant turned into a food truck that turned into a restaurant that turned into three restaurants now going on five. And I got seven more opening this year and I'm still pinching myself like, I cannot believe this all because of a name, all because I wanted to help people reimagine food. Hmm. Love it. But are you slutty though? No, I'm just playing. So, <laughs> yes. um, okay. okay, so she answered that. So <laughs> would you consider Portia as, a, no, all right, let me move on. All right, so. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you team, uh, all right. So uh, Pinky, Pinky Cole is here. She's in the building, not physically, but you know, with social distancing because it's still a pandemic. What's in your burgers that people are like raving about? Because I've had like the, the other burgers that had some stuff. I had things that they said aren't really meat, but I, I understand that your formula, your recipe is out of this world. Well, the recipe is love, right? So mm. like when you come to Slutty Vegan, you're not coming to a restaurant. Like you're coming onto a full on experience. So you mm -hmm. have been to Hershey Park, Six Flags, uh, Adventure World, like when you go and you feel like a kid in a candy store, that's how you feel when you come to Slutty Vegan. So we are selling the experience. So if you ever walk into my store, my, my employees are going to scream with you. They laughing with you. They're going to hug you before COVID, but the music is loud. The music speaks to the ambiance. So like it, it's, it's, we sell burgers and fries, but the brand is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle brand that makes you feel good. It makes you forget all the woes of the world. And it reminds you of the nostalgia of like the cookout that you used to go to back in the day or the family reunion you used to go to back in the day. And, and that is the emphasis that we put on the marketing and branding and it drives people through the door. So when you see lines down the block, when I tell you, Karen, People come from around the world to patronize Slutty Vegan. Mm. They come for the experience, but they leave with the food. Like we make you feel so special that by the time you done had your last bite on your burger, you don't even realize that you had a guilt-free burger. You don't even realize that, that you ate something that didn't compromise an animal, whether you're vegan or not, right? Because 97% mm. of the people who come to Slutty Vegan are meat eaters. So I'm not pushing the agenda on you. I'm not telling you you're going to hell if you're not vegan. I'm telling you, you're going to come here. You're going to have a good experience. Mm. And it's going to be organic and authentic. And you're going to fall in love. And it's going to make you want to come back. That is the recipe. So I'm looking at the one night stand right now. I'm looking mm -hmm. at the sloppy toppy. I'm looking That's at the whole, <laughs> the whole boy. Yeah. I'm looking at all the of the side hoe. Ah. Yeah. The side hoe. You know, <laughs> super slut. Plant-based yes. patty loaded with guacamole, jalapenos, vegan cheese, caramelized onions, lettuce, tomatoes, yes. and their slut sauce. We don't know what's in the sauce. Yeah, what's we don't in know. The it's a secret sauce. sauce. Yeah. It, on a the, vegan Hawaiian bun. Come sauce. on now. Yeah. What's, all, what's, what's in the slut sauce? It, it's a secret. I can't tell you, Karen. If I tell you, I got kids. It's a secret. I, know. I, need to live. <laughs> I got work to do. I got work to do. Picky Cole is here. Pinky Cole is in the building. Um, the, the partnership with Shake Shack, which I was so incredibly proud of because it speaks to you more than them. Right. How did that Absolutely. come about in this, in this pop-up and are there going to be more of these? Absolutely. So Randy Giroudi, who is the CEO of Shake Shack, number one, he's amazing. He's one of my mentors. And we had a really good conversation one day. And then he was just like, you know, it would be dope. We need to collaborate. And I'm and like, this, it's a no brainer, right? So the, 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 hum, the most humbling piece of all of this is here I am, this little small fish in this big world, and I get to partner with one of the most popular concepts in the country, right? And, and when we did it, it was amazing. We sold out in about two hours. So we did an activation where there were two cities, one in Atlanta and one in New York. We, we canceled the one in New York. We actually moved it back to August. 
but we just merged both of our recipes. So my, my special sauces and toppings with a vegan patty that they're working on. Um, and we launched it and it was amazing. And the, the, the bigger piece of it is, is I'm very intentional on in what I do. And I love their movement, the community movement, right? So we come from two very different worlds. Like they sell meat, I sell vegan patties, but they're all about community. We're all about community. Like they care about people, we care about people. So I say, you know what? I want to be able to do something with a company like that. And when I tell you that was one of the best things I could have ever done because I was able to utilize their audience and be exposed to a mm. different audience through, through the Slutty Vegan brand. So um, I'm looking forward to more partnerships with Shake Shack. Um, and I got some other big partnerships happening too. You know, it's just this, this, this second quarter has been looking really good for Slutty Vegan and yes. for me. And, and just as a black owned woman owned business, yeah. all of the amazing opportunities that, that have been placed in front of me, I don't take them for granted. And I'm gonna just, you know, take them as they come and just run with it and really continue to grow my brand. With, yeah. with, the, with the startup business, right? The business model, how, how hard was it to get into that lane? Because, you know, the whole vegan thing is exploding last couple of years how, how hard was it to just jump in with a with a from scratch ground up uh you know model it actually wasn't hard at all so when i started slutty vegan obviously they have amazing restaurants in atlanta mm -hmm. um but the the big restaurants they weren't doing it right like i've been vegan for seven years like and when mm -hmm. i wanted something to eat i was eating a side salad and some chick-fil-a fries so when i started the business it was a good opportunity to like really paint on a blank canvas. So when I did it, I realized that the big boys started coming and wanted to put, you know, items on their menu. So I think the slutty vegan was really able to set a trend and to show that one, you could sell vegan food in the South and people want to buy it. And mm. two people just want to be a little more conscious in the things that they consume. Even if it starts at a vegan burger and fries, like now you can go to any fast food joint, you can go to any restaurant and you can get vegan options on the menu. Once upon a time, it wasn't that easy. Right. So right. it was actually a good opportunity for me to be an anchor for that. So now people come to me for thought leadership. I got big boys that have been in business for 10, 15, 20 years asking me how I did it. And I'm like, I don't know, this was divine, right? Like I'm just intentional about everything that I do. And as long as you continue to be intentional, whether you're new business, whether you've been in business and you want to pivot your business, as long as you're intentional about it, anything that you want, you could get. Mm. Yes. Congratulations on everything you've been doing. I'm a new transport to Atlanta. I went to Slutty Vegan for the first time last month, had a blast. It was ratchet. Nice. It was a great old time. Did you, you got a cookbook. I, I, I got, I did. I got, um, I got the, the Slutty, the hoe, the side hoe. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. I just want, you have a, a book coming out. You also yes. have a docu series that you're going to be doing. So what's that docu series going to look like? Cause I know it's an Atlanta theme, you know, how ratchet are we getting? What's what are we looking forward to in the docu series? Um, so first of all, I got a couple of things coming out. So the name of my book is called Eat Plants, Bitch. Um, so yeah. this, <laughs> this, this is a guide for the meat eater who wants to eat vegan. So so that's coming out. I actually just signed a deal with Simon and Schuster, which I'm very happy about. Um, I have a documentary coming about coming out, which talks about how Slutty Vegan has been able to thrive in the middle of a pandemic mm. and how we've been able to grow tremendously. And then the docu-series is about my life, how I'm growing this vegan multi-million dollar empire um, with my village, right? So you get to see the good, the bad, the ugly, obviously it's not wretched, um, but you really get to see true entrepreneurship. And I've always just been very transparent about my journey, right? So like, I'm showing you what it looks like the days when I don't feel like it, the days that I'm crying, the days that I'm happy, the days where I don't make no money today, but the days where I got lines all the way down the block. So you'll get to see the beauty of the business and you'll get to see the, the, the fears of the business and the speed bumps of the business, but nonetheless, all the things that help to grow grow this empire and just make it great. So I, I'm signing on with a really, really big network. So uh, hopefully y'all tune in when that comes out, but it's coming out oh, very soon. We will, Pinky Cole, yeah, um, we're going to support everything you're doing because this is the blueprint for how we do business. It can't absolutely. just be about you getting rich and no, nobody else eating. You're not just mm -hmm. feeding yourself, you're feeding everybody else. And then you turned around, I read, and you gave, uh, you uh, forgave the debt of students at, in 2019 at Clark Atlanta. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. I mean, you know, mm. that to me, you know, like, come on. When, when, when good people eat, when there's money in good people's pockets, everybody, everybody eats. eats. Yes. That should be the everybody way that is. Talk about yep. that, Pinky. 
So I have a foundation. It's called the Pinky Co Foundation. And <clears throat> I really did it because it was a way to formalize the fact that I just really like helping people. Like both my parents are Jamaican. I saw my mother give the clothes off her back to help people. Um, so as an adult, I absorbed all of that. So I've done so much through the foundation. One of those things where for giving the debt of uh, 30 uh, seniors so that they could walk across the stage and didn't have to worry about money. Um, Rashard Brooks, who was murdered in the Wendy's parking lot, I provided $600,000 worth of scholarships in conjunction with Clark Atlanta University, um, bought a brand new car for the family and life insurance for the family. I've donated tons of coats, thousands of pounds of fruit. Um, I partnered with Impossible Foods and Jermaine Dupree to do an online voters race registration drive to get people excited about voting. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I'm working on an initiative to get uh, all black men in Atlanta, if you make $30,000 or less life insurance that you don't have to pay for. I just bought a community center in, in the same neighborhood in which my first location is in. Um, I've donated over $300,000 to organizations and entrepreneurs. I've done so much, but like that is the core of who we are. Like philanthropy is what I do. Like, yeah, I sell burgers and fries and pies, but like to be able to help people, that is the most rewarding piece of it all. And, and I tell people this all the time, Jews do it all the time, right? Mm. So I'm being the example of what it looks like when we have that community involved involvement, when, when, when group economics come into place, when, when you make the money, you pour it back into the community and help people. Like that is the most important piece. And if I can use my platform to do all of those things, then, then that is my real mission and intention. And that's exactly how we all win, not just me win, how we all win. Mm. We all can Woo. win when we have that <laughs> mentality. Uh, you yeah. can follow that at, at Pinky, what Pinky's talking about. Pinky, P-I-N-K-Y, -I gives back. At Pinky mm -hmm. Gives Back, you can see that. Of course, Slutty Vegan ATL at Slutty Vegan mm. ATL. You can go to SluttyVeganATL.com and see all yes. of the deliciousness. I know uh, y'all had pies. I know y'all had Slutty Pies. Yeah, mm -hmm. she, said, yeah. she said burgers, Sweet fries, potato. and pies, Lamont. Yeah, yes. I ain't know that. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to let's, come down there and get slutted out. You know what I mean? Yes, come on through. Yes, you can, Lamont. <laughs> um, one would suspect, though. Uh, so Pinky <laughs> Cole is here. Pinky Cole is here. How, how, what was the impetus for you becoming first a vegetarian and then transforming into a vegan and how difficult was it? And what, what, why, why did you do that? So I marinated in the womb of a vegetarian. My, my mother is a Rastafarian. Um, so I grew up in her household. So I never seen my mother wear makeup. She ain't wear no earrings. I ain't never even see her shave, shave her legs, nothing. So she she's always been a very natural woman so I adopted a lot of that from my mom um so the transition actually wasn't hard I stopped eating meat in 2007 and seven years ago I decided to go vegan I actually had a restaurant in New York City in Harlem it was called Pinky's Jamaican and American Restaurant so here I am a vegetarian selling oxtails and I'm like okay this is not in alignment with who I am so I decided to, to dish the meat and that was actually the best decision I made in my life and when I did it a lot of people weren't vegan, right? And, and they thought that I was crazy or something was wrong with me. But now I have an opportunity to show people that like vegan is not bad. It ain't scary. If you okay with eating a dead animal, you can eat something that ain't dead and it'd be cool. Mm. Um, so I, I've been able to build my business around that. And a part of the reason why it has been working is because I'm in alignment. Like I, I can do this without making money, right? Like I like to, 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 to give people food that's vegan and they don't know the difference. Um, so that transition was very easy. Uh, everybody around me now, they just want to be vegan just because they think it's really cool. Um, and we made vegan cool, cooler than what it was, right? Um, and especially Black people, making Black people be excited again about veganism is like the funnest part. So many people come up to me like, Pinky, you changed my life. Like, I would have never ate vegan food if it wasn't for you. So to be able to have people come up to me and say that um, just feels good because I know that like at, at the least I'm helping people open up their consciousness and change their mind about food. Mm. And, and this is self-preservation for all of us because during COVID we, we, we know that our underlying conditions were the biggest entry point for this virus to attack us, you know, it's the yeah. high blood pressure, the diabetes and, and the heart, heart clogging and all of the foods that we eat that can be exacerbated by changing, just making a simple shift. How has yeah. your health improved or what have you seen in that area as a result of you uh, turning into uh, or turning towards veganism? Um, so much. Um, my, my energy level um, ha has been lifted. Um, my vibration and my frequency is different, right? The way that I think, the way that I communicate, the things that I talk about, the things that I care about um, 
all has shifted because I completely went vegan. Like I don't consume any dead animals in my body, right? So like I, how I think, how I feel, how I move, how I operate, um, the conversations that I have, right? Like my mental energy, my spiritual energy has all shifted. And I know that might sound a little cliche, but like, I don't know if y'all are vegan or not, but try it for like two weeks and you'll see the difference. Just like mm -hmm. when people go raw vegan, uh, food is energy, right? Um, so the level of energy that I have is unmatched because I decided to go vegan. And, and I'm more conscious about the things that, that I eat. Like I'm the type of person that I'm on YouTube, like challenging myself to be better. I always want to be better. And as long as I continue to live that kind of life and wanting to be better, wanting to think better, wanting to learn more, um, then I know that I'm on the right path and veganism has helped me to do that. You, you said 97% uh, of your customers aren't vegan. Like yeah. what, what does that, what does that point to? What do you, why do you think that is? Um, because you, you got to meet people where they at, right? Mm -hmm. So we infuse a lot of slutty vegan into the culture. So the people who come to Slutty Vegan aren't coming because they vegan and they want a vegan burger, right? Vegans already get it. I'm, I'm going to be honest. They already get it. But the people who are open to try it, what really drives them to the restaurant is the fact that they done been on our social media and seen the marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. And just like the Coca-Cola and the Pepsis of the world, they're not selling soda. Right. They're selling an experience. They're selling a lifestyle. So, so we've been able to hone in on that. Um, and the meat eaters are willing to try it. And then by the time they try it, they're like, oh, this is good. I can do this again. So I look at Slutty Vegan like the, the entry point to like a whole new world, right? So I'm not telling you to eat burgers and fries every day. And again, I've been so transparent about that, but this is the first step in the right direction. Like when you go into the hospital and you go through triage and you see the nurse before you see the doctor. So after you eat a Slutty Vegan, I want you to try some alkaline vegan food. Right. Mm. I want you to go to another restaurant and see if they have vegan food on the menu. But this is the entry point to the rest of your life. And I'm not pushing it on you, but I just want you to have more options. And people like that idea because they don't feel pressured and it makes them want to come back again and again.